Welcome to the Bookshelf Tour. My name is Nicole and I will be your host this evening or this morning or whenever it is you are watching this. I don't know how else to say it, but I thought it was about time that I filmed my Bookshelf Tour. So this will be the official Bookshelf Tour for 2024, depending on how this goes and how my collection grows. I may make this a yearly thing on my channel. I am actually standing up today. I will switch off the fairy lights for the close-ups on the shelf. Don't want to send anyone into an epileptic fit or myself. I do think for flashing in my eyes will, you know, not be pleasant. But yeah, so we are going to be going over the fantasy shelves. Some of these you've probably not seen. So fantasy shelves behind me, YA, adult. And then on this side, you will see the contemporary romance shelves and also the remaining of like the YA novels and fantasy novels. And then I will also go through my TBR cut. I'm also going to just be showing you an overview of the shelves, maybe discussing a couple books that are special, important to me. And then maybe being like, these are the ones I haven't read. Some of the shelves are embarrassing and will call myself out because I haven't read the books. So it's not going to go very well because my tripod only goes so high. So I don't know how I'm going to get to the top shelves. Haven't planned this out, but it's fine. Let's just get into the bookshelf tour for 2024. Okay, so this is the very top shelf over here in the left hand corner. So it's just basically the hardcover collection. Once again, I do apologize. I'm holding this with my hand on my tripod. I have read all of the books on this shelf except for Sweet and Bitter Magic. These Hollow Vows and these Twisted Bonds by Lexi Ryan are actually the special editions by Fairy Loot, if I can turn it around. Around. See, we got some pretty stuff on the spines. And then this one too. Oh, and the bottom's blue. I really loved the Shiver series when I was younger. Rogue Wave, the prettiest book cover in the world. But yeah, this is not really a shelf that I did much with. I just liked the way, you know, the hardcovers looked. And then we pop into the first of two Sarah J Mass shelves. So this is just the hardcover US editions of Throne of Glass. Nothing too special, pretty standard hardcover. I love them. I adore them. We then go into Crescent City, which is the special edition Illumicrate versions of this book. I haven't, you know, made the decision to pop alternative dust jacket on yet. I just, I'm really worried about damaging them. And then we go into the Australian slash UK uh, paperback editions of Throne of Glass. This shelf isn't tall enough, so you will notice that Assassin's Blade and Tower of Dawn aren't actually on this shelf. They do live down here, but they're also not white, so they didn't go. So I wasn't too mad that they don't fit on. Normally, yes, that would upset me and I wouldn't like it, but that's this shelf. <laughs> And then we go into the next Sarah J Mass shelf down here. So like I was saying, we just have Assassin's Blade and Tower of Dawn here. We also have Catwoman by Sarah J Mass. Did anyone get into those books? Because I liked it, but I never read like the rest of them. But that's just such a random thing that she did that I love. And then we have my Akatar books here. I then have my paperback of Crescent City. I haven't put House of Flame of Shadow there yet because it lives on my TBR card until I've done my wrap up video. So that won't move on to the shelf until March. We then have my special edition of Throne of glass right here on display. It looks cool. And then we move into the US editions of A Court of Thorns and Roses. I hate that it doesn't match. And then these are just my page overlays for the special editions of Present City that I don't know what to do with and I haven't put in the book so they just live there. And then just because I needed to put this book by Melissa West somewhere it went here but it doesn't go there. They're the two Sarah J Mass shelves. <laughs> this shelf I hate. <laughs> This is the shelf looked really good. And then I got a TBR card and a lot of this shelf and the one below this one were where a lot of my unread fantasy books were. And I didn't know what to do with the shelves once the books came off. So they're kind of a mess. So when I read more of my fantasy books, I can make these shelves look better. But I mean, I don't love it, but I feel like it works okay. But I will definitely want to be fixing it up. So over here, we do have the Rick Riordan trilogies for Magnus Chase. The Kane Chronicles, have not read them. And then we just run into some YA fantasy novels from OG times. We've also got another Melissa West novel. All of her books are different heights, so they're just shoved randomly on my bookshelf. I loved The Book of Lies by James Maloney when I was younger. You can tell this book is battered and bruised. It's fantastic. It's like one of the best. And then we move into The Vampire Academy. Once again, very different heights. And then we just have these books like 
by Lori M. Lay. It's the Forest of Souls and Broken Web. Didn't know what to do with them because I pulled them off another shelf. And then we just have Hooked by Emily McIntyre because the rest of her books I haven't read yet. So they're on the TBR card. And then we just have two other YA fantasy books. This one's, it's part of a duology. The other book's somewhere else because once again, different heights and didn't match. But that's that shelf. And then we go on to the second bottom shelf where we have The Inheritance Cycle by Christopher Paulini. So I've read the first three books. When Inheritance got released, I'm like, that's a really thick book and I don't want to do it because I struggled to understand what's going on in these books. It's a bit too fantasy for me. I just realized they don't match. That's actually really annoying. But I want to do a reread of these at some point. So for the sake of it, I say that these are unread because I do plan to reread them. Once again, just some more YA fantasy. Haven't read The Glass Spare or Seasons of the Storm. I haven't got like the price on it. All Dark Shores. I did really like House of Dragons, but the author did some not nice things. So she's been dropped and we're apparently not getting the, the sequel. So fair. So then we just have a Divergent series. Really loved up. These are just like the UK editions. And then we also have the Ash Princess trilogy up there as well because it just sort of flows. It's a little bit of a dark shelf. And then over this side, we have some Julie Kagawa novels. So it's like her weird vampire infested parasite series. Then we've got her Shadow of the Fox trilogy. Haven't read that yet. And then we have Throne of Swan. I love the covers. They're so cool. Didn't like the book very much though. But that's this shelf that you probably never see because I don't ever film in front of it. Who's soz about that? And then this is the other shelf which is basically just nothing. I didn't know what to do it because I pulled things from it and now I don't know what it looks like. So now it's just sort of like some unread books some red books that are fantasy that I don't know what to do with. So we start over here with the Seven Realms. Haven't read those. I purchased them because I picked up a Shattered Realms. Haven't read them either, but I discovered that this is, I think, like a sequel series to that. So I was like, oh, I need to read this. I got these. Haven't read them. <laughs> the rest of the Rick Riordan books I haven't read, which is The Trials of Apollo. And then we have Initiation. I've got two copies of that because when I was last on YouTube, I had a friend, CJ Black. This was his debut novel, and he sent me two copies of it. My name is featured in the back of one of them. And then we move into the Maggie Stiefvater books, which I've read, Divine Rivals, Duology, Gilded I haven't read. And then now you're probably wondering, is the Butterflies That Never Die and Beasts That Never Slumber part of the same series? You are correct. They are a duology. I've not read Beasts That Never Slumber, so it's just here. This was meant to be uh, basically a uh, unread shelf, but then I had to pull books off somewhere else because eventually these books I haven't read will go into the TBR cart. We then have Dark and Hollow Style, also have haven't read it. Prince of Song and Sea, I want to read because it is Little Mermaid, Prince Eric vibes, and I need to read it. And then Always Jane, which is a YA contemporary that needs to go on the TBR card. And then we move on to this skinny shelf and the down the bottom, we just have the Serpent and Dove series by Shelby Morin. I, yeah, I really loved it. I actually have it in hardcover and you'll see it up above. And then we also have the Everneath trilogy, which I realized I've got around backwards. Everneath the first one, that's the last one. I really enjoyed that. Just some fun, cute YA novels. So then I have my Illumicrate special edition of The Sun and, and the Void. That is by Gabriella Romira La Cruz. Oh, and then I have another book, The Color of Dragons. I didn't realize that was there. Clearly I ran out of space. So that's good to know. So that's this shelf. And then the next shelf we have here is one that's completely red. So woo, we have our Percy Jackson series. They look really cool. Cool, the spines match. I much prefer them to the other Rick Riordan books that I have. This is Wicked Kiss. It's like the sequel or the first one to this book series. Like I said, they're split up because of heights and widths and they just fit in the gaps. I then have my Night World books. Does anyone else remember these? Anyone else still waiting for the 10th and final book? I think it's been nearly 20 years. I'm not going to get it, but I'm upset about it. And then I don't actually know what this series is called, but then we have the Scythe, Thunderhead and the Toll by, is it Neil Shusterman? Everyone really liked these. I didn't get the hype. That's this shelf. And then we just come onto another YA fantasy shelf. This actually, this book really hurts me because I haven't actually realized that Requiem, it's meant to be this shade of red and it's been that some damaged. It's now this gold color. Yeah, so I did read the Delirium series by Lauren Oliver when it came out. And I tried to do a reread of Delirium with the new covers because that's what I wanted to do. I got 36 pages in and just wasn't 
loving it, so put it down. So for in all intents and purposes, I do count these three books and novellas as unread on my shelf, but I do think I need to find a better copy of that book because it's damaged and it should be read. But it does kind of go with the theme here. And then we just have, this is kind of like my mermaid -y shelf, if I'm being honest, because this is a mermaid series. We've then got the mermaid and the witch and the sea, the sea witch and the sea witch rising, which was like Little Mermaid Ursula inspired and I didn't love it, which was disappointing for me. But then obviously the fifth wave is there. It was okay. And then we've got Crown of Coral and Pearl and Kingdom of Sea and Stone. I love how everyone ran with like Sarah J Mass inspired titles. So yeah, on this one, I only have these three and a half not read. Welcome to the Twilight Shelf. So this is my, um, I shouldn't have said Twilight, I should have said Stephanie Meyer. So this is obviously Twilight, New Moon, Breaking Dawn, Eclipse, The Short Second Life of Brie Tanner, and then Midnight Sun. And then, oh, the Twilight Twins Anniversary Edition that also had Life and Death, which was basically the gender bend of Twilight, which I actually liked more than Twilight itself, because it cut the story where the story should have been cut, and we didn't need the rest of the three and a half books we got. But it's fine. All four if I include Midnight Sun. That was terrible. I didn't enjoy it at all. We then also have The Chemist by Stephanie Meyer, and then The Chronicles of Nana, the bind up movie edition. Can we just take a moment to appreciate how sun damaged and faded this is? Because that's sort of the vibes it should be. But look how white and pristine. Well, I mean, it's a bit dirty because I had dirty hands when reading it, clearly. But it's pristine white. This book has been on my shelf. This is a 2005 edition. This is nearly 20, fucking hell, I've nearly had it for 20 years. God, now I feel old. Nearly 20 years old and look, it's still white. They just don't make paper the same these days. I don't have any paperback editions of Twilight. They're a hardcover because I like how they look. They also smell really, really good. You know what? My previous hardcovers smelled better. They had this really distinct, cool book smell to them, and I just loved it, but these ones just don't do it for me. So for some reason, we're not wanting to go as high as we should, but we do go into my Julie Kagawa shelf because I couldn't make them look cool on a big shelf, so they got a little square. So these are the OG covers of her, what, the Iron Fae? series and then I even have this like novella bind up and then we have the Talon series. I am missing the final book which is Inferno but I didn't love this series and I didn't want to spend like 17 to 20 dollars on the paperback and I've not had an interest in reading it. It's about dragons. You thought I would have loved it but the main character, I don't know her name, but she's fucking annoying. Couldn't stand her. And then we have the third and final Melissa <laughs> West novel which is shoved in here because space worked. And then the final shelf in this skinny shelf is my Becca Fitzpatrick novels. So we have her standalone Black Eyes, which I really loved, and then the Hush Hush series, OG YA fantasy right here. And then we have this Angel Fire, Wings of the Wicked and Shadows of the Silence, also very sun damaged now that I look at it. Enjoyed these books, but that's all I really have to say about this shelf. It's nothing exciting. And then we go over into what is probably my favorite entire shelf, like all six shelves, they're top tier. So up here we have my hardcovers. To the left we have, yes, I have two editions of Law by Alexandra Bracken. I'm pretty sure the one on the far left where all you can see is the spine with the yellow and the black snakes is my fairy loot edition. And then we go into the one that's forward facing and I'm pretty sure that's Owl Crate. Really loved that book, hence why I have three editions. You will see the paperback shortly. And then we just go into some more hardcovers. So we've got like the Kerry Maniscalco series. Didn't really like Kingdom of the Wicked to be honest. Lady Rogue, which was all right. And then we go into my hard covers of the Serpent and Dove series that I was pointing out the paperbacks before but yeah and then that's just rising on an enchantment of ravens because that's the only Margaret Rogerson book I like. This feels like like mu musical chairs or something. So you can see my next shelf so just pretend you can't. We then go into my special edition shelves. Um, So over here we do have the fairy loot editions of the Iron Fae series by Julie Kagawa that literally hello sits right there next to it. They're my special editions. I even have the special editions of the Evenfall series which I think was like a follow-on. Haven't read the paperbacks. Also frustratingly missed out on the Iron Vow because they clearly didn't print enough copies and I don't think it even made it to general sale and I missed out. Also no one's listing it anywhere secondhand to buy so if you know a copy that's in Australia that's being sold please let a girl know because I want to complete it. It'll be awkward if I don't even like it. And then we go into another OG YA fantasy series which is the Fallen series by Lauren Kate. I loved it and decided that I wanted the hardcovers over the paperbacks because they were also different heights. <laughs> Story of this video. And then we go into my special editions by Fairy Loot of of the Last Hours trilogy by Cassandra Clare. I do have the model instruments coming, but I really like how the gold 
ties in really well and I think that this shelf is stunning. And then we go into this next shelf which I have already started to fondly refer to as my Rebecca Yaros shelf because as you can see half of it is just fourth wing. Yeah I have three editions of fourth wing. I regret nothing. I'm just starting halfway through this shelf. So we have the Australian UK paperbacks. They're pretty boring. We then have the Australian and New Zealand special edition of a fourth wing. So it's just like the UK or US edition and then you have like the spray painted spines and then nothing interesting on the back. So I, this one did arrive damage and then we move into the u.s special holiday edition black paint i'm a little confused this is also a a much nicer cover than what they should have done originally but b are they gonna bring out a, an iron flame holiday edition because i was worried that they brought iron flame out with black sprayed edges and then also plain sprayed edges so i'm worried that that was the special edition to match this and i never bought it and then we have the australian and new zealand special edition of iron flame with these sprayed edges that just look absolutely stunning and it's got like really cool reflection so really like that one and then it's just displayed the exact same so eventually when i get more editions and she brings out the next books this whole shelf's just going to be dedicated to her basically but can we just take a minute to appreciate how well these line up and then we go into the rest of the shelf i'll switch sides this is my leftover cassandra claire paperbacks and then a jennifer l armand trout series we literally just have the rest of the shadow hunter novels and standalones and such that i couldn't fit anywhere else is she going to finish the eldest curses series we only got two books and we've not gotten anything since i'm thinking no which upsets me because i really enjoyed reading about magnus and alec they were great and then i also have my paperback editions of the lexi ryan these hollow vows duology which i have the fair loot special editions of and then this was jennifer l armand trout series that i really loved and enjoyed but i did a reread of it and i hated it realized that her writing just isn't for me and that's fine so this is this shelf and then this is just another ya fantasy shelf it's mostly my tall paperback so by amy kaufman and jay Kristoff. i absolutely love their writing together so if they bring out any more books this will just turn into their shelf so we've also got the illuminate files by them and then also the aurora cycle by them absolutely loved it got two victoria aviad books i did not like this duology which was okay i don't even know what it's called like the incendiary duology it was okay we then have jessica shervington who for a really long time was one of my favorite authors and i had to have all of her books so this is one series by her and then a duology by her she's not done anything since from what i know she's just released this series in about 20 different covers but yeah this whole shelf has been read and the only books that i like on it are these two so that's a win as far as i'm concerned but i have reread these a couple times and i adore them so some really good og like australian ya fantasy welcome to the cassandra claire shelf i mean technically i have one and a half shelves but well i mean two because i've got special edition i think it's impressive actually that she only has one proper dedicated shelf considering how much i love her books and how thick her books are so over here we start off with mortal instruments and yes i have them small and big i am on the hunt to get them all small and then we have the clockwork series by her the last hours trilogy then the dark artifices and then this an illustrated history of notable shadow hunters and denizens of the downworld it like talks through all the characters and stuff so i really like that yeah you guys have probably seen this shelf before because if i'm filming i'm sitting more in this sort of spot so you've probably seen them before but we will just go to the last shelf on the fantasy shelves please ignore the fairy light we've had a blowout and they've fallen oh ollie's here too so this is i guess the jk rowling slash harry potter shelf plus my remaining victoria aviard novels so we have my illustrated editions of the harry potter series which will eventually take up the rest of the space Oh, there's only two more to come, so I'm worrying. I'll have to do, I'll have to get creative. Oliver, you're ruining my content. And then we have my paperbacks of it. And then we go into my Victoria Ape Yard novels for the Red Queen series. This is this shelf. I'm gonna show you guys what it looks like overall. And that's what I'm going to show you of Oliver because he's messed up the floor. And then that's Hercules, my plant. Yes, my plants are named after Disney characters. But they are the bulk of my fantasy shelves. And you know what? Whilst I'm up, let's do the TBR cart first. And then this is the TBR cart. So I've just got a fake plant on the top shelf. Then here is where I put the books I've read and then the rest of my TBRs. And then down here on 
these two last bottom shelves. That is the rest of my 24 books I want to read in 2024 and then the book series that I want to read this year and then those three books there. I'm just slowly bringing in more unread books from the other side of the cart because I've got more unread books on the other side so I'll spin it around and show you guys and when I read these books on this side they go on the other side so I know that they've been read and I don't need to focus on them but it's just a way for me to visually see what books it is I need to read but that's what the TBR cart looks like on this side. So this is where I put the books that I've read off those two challenges. There's just so if I need to do any other videos they're easily accessible to me and I don't have to pull my bookshelf apart because that was a pain in the ass having to do that last year and then we just go into some contemporary unread books in my TBR that will slowly move around to the front of the cart as I get down on those two challenges. The next shelf is just some more unread books so we've got the rest of the Emily McIntyre series here. You will have noticed that some book series are mixed up like Fable namesakes down on the next shelf and then over here I've actually like double stacked them because these books are thicker and I wanted to get as many in as possible so like we've got the Blade of Secrets, we've got the next Cassandra Clare book and then another one behind it. I just wanted to fit as many books on here as possible and then the third shelf is same to the second one so we've got the Iron Fae Even Fall so we've got the Iron Sword and the Iron Raven. I've got the special editions and the Fairy Loot I pointed out. I haven't picked up the Iron Vow but when I do I plan to read all three together. We've got Namesake which was the sequel to Fable and then I've just got some more books here stacked in there of the tall um, I'll show you on the side like the tall paperbacks and then in there too and then this one's a special edition actually can I get it out so yeah um the forest grin by Catherine Purdy look at that that's stunning. But yeah, that is the TBR card. Now we find ourselves at the contemporary romance shelves, which is what you guys have more frequently actually seen. So I'm just gonna like zoom you in. This top shelf is like going to become my Emily Henry shelf at some point. And it's my Abby Jimenez shelf, but we have her books over here. I really liked yours truly. I think that's her best book. And then Life's Too Short, also really good. Just three other contemporaries that I have up here. I then have the American editions of Emily Henry novels in paperback. They haven't released Happy Place to look the same as these ones. So I just got the Australian UK edition, which is ridiculously tall. Then I also have my special editions of Emily Henry's novels. So Beach Read, You and Me on Vacation, Book Lovers, and then also Happy Place. On this shelf, I haven't read Dating Dr. Deal. I just needed the space, so I kept it. Then we have my three Kate Bromley novels. Yes, they don't match. Surprisingly, doesn't irritate me as much as I thought it would. Then go into my Eleanor R. Mass novels here. Really enjoyed those three for the most part. And then I haven't read the two James Bailey novels which is the way back to you and the flip side but that's this shelf we go into another romance and contemporary shelf which you guys have seen before so over here we do have my lisa k adams novels which is the bromance book club i love these contemporaries they're fun you laugh out loud they're just a good time so it's basically a bunch of men who make a book club and read romance novels to save their relationships or get a relationship it's fantastic and then we have the apparently it's the well met series now it's not the willow creek series i don't believe i've read here for the right reasons then we've got The Hating Game by Sally Thorne. It's the only book of hers I really, really like. The other two I just didn't think were very good. Then Brush With Love by Maisie Eddings. I want to pick up the rest of her novels. She's got like four. Then we have The Xmas Holidays, which I really, really enjoyed if you saw my December wrap up. And always nice to have a Christmas novel front and center. And then we have Set On You by Amy Lear. This is the only book of hers that I've read. I didn't really enjoy it, so I haven't picked the other ones up, but I am contemplating it. And then we just go into this stack. I have read all of them except Prom Theory. I don't know how the Royals Next Door made it. I really hated on that book last year and I just stand by it. It wasn't good so I don't know why it's still here. And then we move into the Knock Em Out series by Lucy Score. I have only read The Things We Never Got Over. So that's it there. I still need to read the sequel and the third novel. The sequel was Things We Hide From The Light and then Things We Left Behind. They're just really thick contemporary novels and I just haven't committed to them but I would like to read them this year and I didn't want to split up the series so that's why they stayed there. That is that shelf. And then we go into probably like from this way onwards I really really love this shelf. So it is my Allie Hazelwood shelf. It is eventually just going to become a shelf dedicated to her I think. So I do have my Afterlight slash Illumicrate special editions here. These are stunning. Then I have all her paperbacks. You won't see Bride because the day I'm filming this which is the 7th of February Bride actually comes out today allegedly so I have to go to the bookstore to get it but it will sit in here and yes, I have purchased the special edition of it as well. And then we move on to BK Borison, her three novels, which are 
stunning. Look at those covers. Like her books are so cute and I can't wait for Business Casual to come out. And then we go into one of my favorite authors for a long while, which was Alice Clayton. I love Wallbanger series by her. It's so good. It's laugh out loud funny, just like classic rom-com. It's fantastic. And then we have her Redhead series and then her Nuts. I don't know what it was called. And then we just have the Jeanette McCurdy memoir that I didn't really rate. So this shelf is one of my least favorite shelves and has been for a while. I'm always redoing it and I'm always hating it. To start off with, we have my Beth O'Leary here books and another big one, uh, an author I really, really enjoy. We then also have some Meg Cabot books over here and then just some standalone contemporaries that I didn't know what to do with. You Had Me at Hilumi and The Seven Husbands of Sevel and Hugo were literally shoved there when I finished my reading. Wrap up for January. I kind of hate this shelf. I'm not going to lie. Like there's no reason to it. Okay, you're going to sit there. All right. Look, you are improving the shot. I'm not going to lie, Ollie. You have taken this from about a three to a 10. So I appreciate that. So yeah, look, this is a shelf that I'm continuously working on, but I don't like it. It's my least favorite. So let's move on from it. Okay. And then we come to the shelf above, which is kind of a bit more of my YA contemporary novels. I don't know how I made the color scheme work with the white, but I have read majority of the books on these shelves. I really love this series by Stephanie Perkins. I loved What If It's Us and Here's to Us by Becky Albertalli and Adam Silveria. I thought that was amazing. The Long Distance playlist was so good too. And then The Fault in Our Stars is like the only John Green book I've read that I like. Then we move into the Gail Foreman books. So it's If I Stay, Where She Went, Just One Day and Just One Year. I really enjoyed them. And then we go into our, is it Jenna Evans Welch books? But I do really enjoy her novels. And then we just go into a whole heap of different YA contemporaries here. I've read all of them except We Can't Keep Meeting Like This and Kisses and Croissants. I really enjoyed What I Like About You by, I think it's Melissa Cantor. And then we have Husband Material and Boyfriend Material by Alexis Hall. I wanted to really like them, but the main characters were annoying, so I didn't. And then we go into these ones here, which is Her Royal Highness and Prince Charming. That's such a cute, simple cover. But this is this shelf. So this shelf, if I'm being completely honest, I would love to unhaul all except four books on this entire shelf. So as you can see, it is my Colleen Hoover shelf. I'm just over her as an author at the moment. I have three books left of hers to read. If I could keep any books by her, it would probably be Confess, Ugly Love, Verity. Yeah, probably those in all honesty. All of the other ones I had issues with and I didn't like them. And then we move over here to my Tessa Bailey novels. Also want to sell those ones. I just don't really love them. I don't understand the hype with it happened when some of the main characters are terrible. But I did enjoy the Written in the Stars series by Alexandra Belfleur. So I would keep that one. And then also this one by Lauren Kate, which is by any other name. I really enjoyed that. These four novels, I would keep. The rest of it, I would sell. This is the last bottom shelf. I do actually really enjoy this shelf. So I have read all of the books except that skinny paperback, my epic spring breakup. Basically any hardcover YA books that I get, they go here. They're all sun damaged. So that seems to be a common theme with me and my books. We have my Jen Bennett collection. We then go into my Jenny Han series, which is to all the boys I've loved before. We then go into, I think it's Emma Mills. I've got her four novels. We then have the Christine Ruscio, um, a game but better. And then we just have a couple of standalones here and then more than maybe by Aaron Hahn is one that I did quite enjoy so I brought it forward but that is this shelf. Okay, we're getting to the end of this. So this is kind of like a weird amalgamation of books on this shelf. It's mostly YA novels that I didn't know what to do with. So we do have this series by Rebecca Lim. We then have all of my Ali Carter novels. This is going back to when I was in high school. We then go into The Inheritance Games by Jennifer Barnes. I've not actually read this trilogy at all, but can we take a moment to appreciate the spines? They look so good together. Love it. And then we go into basically thriller novels. So I only have two, which is The Silent Patient and then also The Soulmate. I didn't know where to put them and their spines kind of worked here. And then we go into our Kira Cass, the selection series. So I have all of the books and the novella. Let's just pull out a cover that I think is stunning, which is The Air. I love this cover. Wasn't a fan of the book and the daughter's story. It's basically like 
these three are the bachelor meets the royal family in like a dystopian society. We then got more Meg Cabot books here that I forgot she wrote about, which was the Abandoned series. It was really frustrating because they brought out the first book in black and then the next two in white. And then over here, we just have some random contemporary adult novels. I don't even know what to call this. The fact I've kept this series is impressive. Yeah, so basically this was during my Fifty Shades of Grey era. I don't want to call it that. This was also one that I bought at the same time, which was Gabrielle's Inferno. But it's more like a professor, essentially fucking a student. It was a bit weird and creepy. And somehow it's made it through every unhaul under the sun. Maybe it'll be in the next one. And then we go into these books by Tamara Weber, which is easy. I adore this book. It was so good. And then Breakable's the sequel. But those two are just in there because we needed some more black to tie in the shelf. But that's that shelf. And then we have this third shelf here, which is just more YA. So over here, I have read all of these books. That's a lie. This shelf has a lot of unread books on it. But out of this stack here, I have read these ones. And then I just need to read the Cruel Prince series by Holly Black. And then we move into a whole heap of unread books. So the first one is The Bone Witch. We then go into The Legend Board Cycle by Tracy Dion. Haven't read Legend Born or Blood Marks, but the covers are stunning. And I really need to get to them. We then also <laughs> said I hadn't read all these books have the twin crowns and curse crowns by Catherine Doyle and Catherine Weber haven't read them either but I'm hoping to get to them you know at some point whilst I'm alive you know I'm not going to give a time frame because in my lifetime seems a doable achievement for me to read them we then move into soulmates by Holly Byrne want to call this book out this book fucked with my life and my head and I cried hysterically and it's still one of the best things I have ever read and then we have another mermaid book because it didn't fit on the other shelf which was to kill a kingdom we then go into some Aussie authors. So Rachel Crawl with her Spark series, absolutely loved it. And then we also have the Refiam series by Paula Weston. These four bloody brilliant, they're fallen angel novels set in Australia. Yes, I have three exact editions of the same book. These books are very special to me. I say that whilst there is a layer of dust on all of them. So my best friend actually wrote these novels. So this first book, she's got the white and the gray. I edited these novels. Like we went through and we wrote notes just on like the formatting on, you know, any grammar errors or something like that, how everything sat because she self-published it. So these were basically like our proofreads of it. I decided that because she was meant to come out with the third book, because it's a trilogy, that I wanted to have three editions of each book. We had like book launches and everything for it. It was great. They're some really special books to me because my best friend wrote them. And then this is just YA fantasy at its core. So a lot of YA series are featured here. So I really enjoyed the Star Cross trilogy by Josephine Alangini. This is like Greek gods, Helen of Troy. We then have the Belgarade series by David Eddings. We then move into the Secrets of the Immortal Nicholas Flamel series. First book never was released in this bigger format so it just sort of sits up the top there on top of my Children of the Red King series by Jenny Nimmo. I absolutely adored these. So I started reading these I think in primary school. I hate that the last three they changed the font there. So I was nine when this book came out so that's when I first started reading this series and I am turning 31 in March. They're well loved. The font really big if you're looking to get like a fantasy series for your child pick up Midnight Charlie Bone by Jenny Nimmo. It's a great series. I loved it. And then we go into Bridget Kemmerer and she has her Elemental series, which is Storm, Spark, Spirit, Secret and Sacrifice. It's all just about this family of brothers who have like elemental magic and it was cool and I loved it. And then also I randomly have The Host by Stephanie Meyer. So I don't think it's on the Stephanie Meyer shelf because the host is slightly shorter than I think The Chemist and I wanted to keep the black with the black and then have the chemist as the blue on the end and it didn't work because they were different heights and it annoyed me. So that's this shelf. So over here we do have the Lunar Chronicles by Marissa Meyer. I really loved the cover for winter. That's why it's on display. And then we also had like the two little novellas by her here at the end. We then move into this Heaven trilogy. It's literally about Fallen Angels again. This is my angel shelf. It's just occurred to me. So then we also have this Angel series by L.A. Weatherly. It was okay. We then move into Penryn and the End of Days series by Susan E. And then we have the Partial series by Dan Wells, which was... Oh, some weird dystopian novel. And then I have more vampire books, which is the Vampire Beach series by Alex Duval. And then we go to the final shelf, 
which is my YA fantasy. So over here in the left, we do have my Susan Collins collection for the Hunger Games. So these are the standard Australian editions. And then these were like the 10th anniversary editions. I tried to get them brand new. This one was like $60 from the US and I'm so mad about it because it's damaged. And then this is my paperback edition of Law. But yeah, these are some of my favorite books. Didn't really like this one. Then over here, we have my Astrid Shuttle books. I read all of them except the League of Liars. They're okay. Don't really remember anything about this book. Then we move into the Gilded Ones by Namina Fauna. So I've got the first book, the Gilded Ones and the Merciless Ones. Also haven't read them. We then move into The Knight's Curse by Karen Duval. Don't really remember anything about it except that I read it and it was okay. We then have these three books by Amy Kaufman and Megan Spooner. I know that I didn't really enjoy this series. And then we go into this duology by Sarah Alderson. It was okay, but that is the final shelf. So I'll show you this big tall one because it's sort of on its own. Please ignore my drink bottle. That plant there in the left, her name is Rapunzel. Yes, once again, Disney. Yeah, so that is the big fantasy shelf, YA1 leftover shelf that you guys don't tend to see. And then this is the contemporary shelf that you guys see quite frequently and have seen frequently. That is the shelves. Okay guys, so that was the bookshelf tour. You have seen my fantasy shelves behind me. You have seen my contemporary romance shelves, random YA shelf that I didn't know what to do with. You've also seen my TBR cart. So that is my current book collection as of February 20. 24. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I do apologize if some of the footage is dodgy because it's literally me holding my phone on the tripod. I can't believe that I'm at Taylor Swift when this video is going live. I will see you guys in next week's video. Bye!